So, um, so I got to give this talk uh, a, a few months ago um, because uh, I started working at Algolia uh, about six months ago. My name is Liam. I am the brand director, which means that I am in charge of the brand. I think that's obvious. Um, so uh, when I first started getting here, uh, I realized that search was uh, a lot bigger than I thought it was. It wasn't just how I enter my credit card details and other things. It was basically this, this sort of conversation um, that people have. So as you know, Algolia search as a service. Um, we do 17 billion API queries per month, bunch of paying customers, and we do it all super duper fast, as I said earlier. Um, so uh, one of the first things I noticed when I got here is that search is a conversation that users have with your product. And I really like that idea of um, when you talk to a product, when you go on Amazon and you say like, I, like this morning, I said, I want a white leather belt. Don't ask why, but I was walking to the metro and I suddenly realized that I'd really like a belt that matched my shoes. And I was like, white leather belt. And Amazon was like, do you mean this? And I was like, that's exactly what I mean. And that was a really engaging conversation to have. Um, and the more I started to look, the more I saw different places where people have conversation. Um, and one of the first places and one of the more popular things that's been coming up is chatbots. And there's some really interesting relationships between uh, chatbots and search, which makes uh, a, quite a number of people at Algolia very interested in the chatbot space, notably Dustin, who's back there working, but is pretty much the smartest person I know on chatbots. Um, and so uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that. So um, the, as I said, the search and chatbot space kind of sits in the same thing. Uh, there's these same three things that, that come back to being important, which is search relevance uh, or speed relevance and design. Um, and if you think about the way you interact with chatbots, um, we either through voice or through text, it's, it's really similar to how you do search. You, you input a message, you send something out, and you expect a result in, in a, a, a short enough time frame that you don't have enough time to think about what the computer is probably doing. It's kind of like a magic trick. You know, the magic is when you don't have enough time to figure out what the magic is. Uh, a lot of search and a lot of chatbot space is a, lot, is a lot around that. It's like, if I have enough time to figure out that Amazon Echo is trying to process the words and they got tricked up because I have an accent or whatever, it kind of ruins the magical feeling. Um, and the same thing goes for relevance uh, and design. You know, if I say, hey, how are you doing? And you say, have a great flight. It's a really weird conversation to have. Uh, and, and both search and chatbots are very similar to that. Uh, I've been using a service recently that I'll talk about a little more called x.ai. Has anyone heard of this? It's an artificial uh, assistant basically 99% of it is just scheduling meetings for you because it's a really manual task to like go and look at your calendar and then tell someone I have these available and then they come back and they're like, well, those don't work for me and you have to reschedule it. So someone built a company called X.AI built an assistant that works with that. And uh, because I was changing time zones recently through flying, it completely destroyed the artificial intelligence. It kept trying to like set up meetings at like 2 a.m. when I was because it thought I was in a different continent and it was a, a very frustrating process and it kind of ruined the magic behind the art, the like artificial intelligence or the, the sort of native uh, chat experience. Um, so uh, jumping into that. Um, so if you haven't already guessed it, um, uh, a chatbot is anything that's voice or text uh, based conversation. Um, so I've talked about a few of them already, but uh, Amazon Echo, uh, Facebook Messenger, Slack bots, uh, Skype bots, Kick bots, Line bots, WeChat bots, there's a bunch of bots. Uh, uh, and so I'm going to focus mostly on chat bots today, um, but most of this stuff is also relevant to voice based uh, conversations. Um, so these are not bots. Um, I don't know if anyone grew up with the Jetsons. Anyone? Jetsons? A few Jetsons watchers? There you go. Um, so Jetsons, not a bot. Um, that guy, terrifying, not a bot. Uh, I think that's Watson. Big giant supercomputers, not a bot. Um, so uh, bots don't move. Uh, bots don't have arms. We're not talking about robots, or and we're not talking about giant computers. We're talking about specifically conversation-oriented uh, user interfaces. Um, so just to get an idea, um, chatbots have been around for a while. It's really, really popular right now. Um, but they've been around basically since the invention of the Turing test was was well. These, I would guess, say the second iteration of the Turing test was basically the first real uh, attempt at creating a conversational interface. Um, for, for those people who don't know the Turing test in a very layman's version is where you try to figure out whether you're having a conversation with a human or a computer. Um, it's a little more complicated than that and a little more scientific, but essentially it's the idea of can a computer replicate human conversation well enough that it's difficult for a jury of people to distinguish whether the conversation is happening between a human and a human or a human and a computer. Um, so 
Uh, going through time, uh, I recently watched HAL 9000 again. I mean, uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey. I don't know if anyone's seen that crazy space trip of a movie, um, but it's just as insane as I remembered it. Uh, HAL 9000, big red dot in the sky that destroys everything, uh, is pretty amazing. Uh, for those of you who grew up with AOL Instant Messenger, Smarter Child, I spent most of my teen years just trying to destroy that chatbot and, and ruin its will to live. I did not accomplish that. And then more recently, Siri and Alexa, and we're pretty uh, familiar with them. Um, the chatbot space today um, basically lives on this axis of human to machine based interaction. And I'll talk a little bit more about what that is and niche versus uh, general interaction. Um, you, you'll notice we haven't really hit that golden space of like 100% machine and super generalized uh, chatbot uh, 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 experience just yet, but we have a few variations. Um, so when I say human to machine, um, a lot of chatbot uh, interfaces still have a mechanical Turk aspect to them where you've got a human behind making sure that the conversation flows the way it should, um, even x.ai. So there's the service that I use if you wanted to see their logo. Um, uh, it still has a human element. You can even like manually CC a human in on the email to make sure that whatever you're saying doesn't get messed up or to bring someone in to help you. Um, but the more, the more niche you get, the more specific the use case, um, for example, um, chatbots around e-commerce are really easy to do because it's essentially taking that search bar experience and putting a little bit of conversation on top of that. But you know at the end of the day that the person still wants to find like the cheapest t-shirt that's a medium by Hanes or whatever their preference is. You know that that's still basically search uh, plus filtering. Um, and then the more general you get around customer support and things like that, where Twitter has a Twitter bot that they're offering to pages um, to do customer support. And there's some other services like AgentBot um, that are doing customer support, uh, the more human the background is. It's more like when you try to do customer service at Orange or whatever your least favorite service in France might be, um, and you try to have a conversation and it's a fixed set of responses, but you kind of get the impression it's just a person in the background going, what's the best response here? And then they click a set of words and they go out. Um, so we haven't really hit that beautiful middle ground yet, but there is some pretty amazing things. So I talk about like form filling replacement, or as I call it, glorified type form. Um, things like x.ai, which is filling out uh, uh, calendar uh, invitations. You, you can kind of imagine in your head how that process would be designed. You know, I, I need a title to my event. It needs a time and location. You can see that there's some interesting like matchmaking and, and processing of information, but it's more or less glorified filling out manual tasks. It's kind of, uh, it, it's, a, it's mostly machine based, but it's not really general. It can be applied to a variety of different verticals, but it's still pretty limited. Um, so the big, oh, look, I, there's, there's some people that will be talking later. So um, the big uh, opportunity here is, is to really like, uh, like build a platform uh, around chatbot facilitation. So the big issue that we have is it, a, pa a pain in the ass to build them. Uh, has anyone here tried to build a chatbot yet? So it's, it's not super duper fun. Um, we'll hear a little bit more about it. Um, and then there's everything from distribution to natural language processing and things like that. Um, speaking of which, there's still uh, a few th limitations uh, around chatbots. So I don't know how familiar you guys are with building them for those of you who haven't. But um, one of the biggest ones, so one is language. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about one uh, company that does language learning and they built a chatbot for every single language that they want to teach you because one bot can't process multiple languages, um, at least not very easily. It's not a scalable development process. Uh, and the other thing is intuition. And this is the more fun thing to do is if anyone's, a lot of my, a lot of friends of mine back in the States got the Amazon Alexa or the tap or the echo uh, for Christmas. And you get these really weird conversations where like you ask a question, it's like, Alexa, what's the weather? And it tells you the weather and you're like, yeah, but is it gonna, is it gonna snow? And, and it tells you the weather again. And you're like, no, you already told me that. I want you to tell me the, I had a follow on question to the thing I originally asked you. And there's no concept in chatbots today of like, oh, the previous conversation was this. So if they're asking a follow on, they probably don't wanna hear the exact same response that they just heard. Um, and that's a really interesting space for us to be in. Um, and that's probably gonna be a major like overhaul in the chatbot space is this idea of, intuition. We have a bit of it where it's like we can learn your preferences. So we know like if you've already bought an item, you might not want to buy that item again. So if we're delivering you results, we might filter based on things we know you've action we know you've taken. But there's no idea of this like continuous conversation, um, which is still majorly lacking uh, in the chatbot space. Um, so I thought I'd take a little bit of time um, 
at least the, the five minutes that I have left, um, and just talk about some of the cooler chatbots that I've seen. Um, not a lot of these are businesses, but um, a lot of them are really, really cool. Uh, so I'll go pretty quickly through them. Um, so this one's called Mitsuku. How many people have played with Mitsuku before? Uh, Mitsuku is pretty insane. Uh, I highly suggest you go and check it out. Um, it's basically a, a chatbot that's the equivalent of like a 14-year-old anime, like Japanese anime girl. Um, it's the weirdest experience I've ever had. Uh, it's not actually a dating app, but it feels really real. Uh, it's pretty insane. Like the first time I played around with it, I just heard about it and I started talking and then like, I'd say like, I'm not going to lie, 50 minutes into the conversation, I was like, oh, I have other things to do with my life, like eating and showering and <laughs> going on with my day. Uh, and I was like, oh, I'm really sorry, Mitsuku, I got to go. And I was like, wait, why am I apologizing to a computer that has no concern if I just close the tab? So it's a really interesting experience uh, in terms of the emotional relationship. Um, so if you have nothing to do or you want to stop listening to me right now for the next four minutes and 10 seconds, feel free to play around with this thing. Um, otherwise, if you're a nicer person, 2 p.m. when you're back at the office and you're supposed to be working and you're drinking your coffee, this thing is hilarious. Um, hilarious or emotionally dependent. Don't, don't get too into it. It can, it can get real. Um, so uh, the other one I talked about earlier is Duolingo. This is probably one of the better ones that I enjoy. Um, so if anyone's ever used Duolingo, it's a language learning app where you, it basically runs you through exercises and uses a pretty common uh, language learning methodology where it just keeps throwing information back at you over time to make sure you don't forget it. Um, and it's pretty easy. And so they, they essentially have this entire content database and adapted it to a, to a chat-based uh, format. And if you're familiar with the app, you'll know it, it actually kind of feels basically the same where it's like, here's a question, you give a response, you get it right or wrong, you move on. And so it works really well uh, inside the chat interface. Um, so he, he, the, here the big limitation is like if you want to learn Spanish, there's like Duolingo Spanish bot or whatever it's called. Uh, and they have one for every language. I think they have like 13 different bots right now. Um, so that's a really interesting one. If you're already using Duolingo, it's a pretty interesting experience. Um, and then there's things like uh, productivity. So here's, um, here's uh, an app that uh, I started using uh, a couple years ago, um, which is called Birdly. Um, actually, the service that I, that I like about it, they no longer provide because they, they pivoted out of, that, out, of, out of providing that service. Um, but the, it's essentially the idea of saying like, like the very basic thing is like, I hate doing expenses. Like I know it's the 25th of the month, which means everyone in Algolia will be doing their expenses today because it's the last day to get them in. Um, and it's a pain in the butt. It's like taking photos of receipts and like pulling those things and all that. It's a, I hate it. It's the worst, and there's no nothing that's ever made it easier. This thing actually was pretty convenient in terms of how it leveraged like OCR when you took a picture. So you had a chat interface where it was like, take a photo, it sends it to you. It pulls everything down, it sends it back to you. You confirm, and it was a really natural experience. Um, and so the the whole idea of like using a chat bait based interface in order to like be more productive is a much more interesting way to interface when you're doing these, I'd say, mundane tasks. And and it also has the ability, which I really like is having a chat interface on top of multiple APIs. So on the one hand, you're pulling in like a natural language processing. Oh, it's called Birdly, B-I-R-D-L-Y, sorry. Um, uh, moving right along, so here's a really good example of terrible chatbots um, and potentially terrible media, depending on what your leaning, leanings are. Um, they're doing okay, I'm just teasing. Uh, it's all fake anyway, though. Um, so, uh, um, so CNN came out with a chatbot. So did TechCrunch and a bunch of other people. That's essentially what I call glorified RSS. It doesn't really feel creative. It's more like it's more like using chatbot as a means to get you onto their website. Not a huge fan of this. Uh, on the other hand, Quartz, uh, QZ.com, if you will, uh, came out with a much more interesting interface where they I. It really like the way they did it. It's not just pulling in an article, but you can pull out specific graphs and you can easily even cross cross reference multiple articles to create this like natural language style conversation. Um, and it's really an example of like, if you want to do chatbots right today, uh, the stuff that works really well isn't taking, it's the same problem that mobile had in like 2007. It's not taking web and bringing it to chat. It's actually saying, what does chat do well and how do people want to receive content or how do people want to be productive in their life or how do they want to date an 18 year old Japanese anime girl? It's, you gotta, you gotta think about the natural format. Um, um, so this one's cool. It's called uh, Anne Chill. This is actually a, a Parisian company that I discovered. Um, only while I was putting this deck together, uh, and I really like them. Uh, and it's basically Netflix recommendations. So if anyone is a movie buff, like I like watching movies, 
And I'd say every six months I have to change the service that I use to get recommended new movies because you go through the engine really quickly and then it kind of falls apart. Um, and, and you start to get the same thing like, no, I've already seen Schindler's List. I really don't want to cry today. Um, so, um, so, uh, and Chill is really cool because it's really that, the, the thing I really liked about it was the sense of uh, not knowing whether it was a man behind the curtain, whether it was a mechanical Turk or not. Um, and there's one more, but we'll skip it because I really don't want to go over. So thank you very much. And uh, I'm happy to take questions for five minutes. No, feel free to applaud. Please applaud me. Applaud me. Any questions? Because I'm hungry, so please have no questions. Anyone? Algolians, you guys want to ask any hardball question? Yes, please. Yes. Yeah. So, so just to repeat, um, the the question about was about um, whether bots should sort of rem whether people are actually going to know bots the same way they know apps, or whether it's going to be sort of a, a behind the behind the scenes thing. Um, I mean, there's two things from from a consumer position. Um, I'm I'm really bad. I hate B two C. My 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 stepmom does consumer marketing, and I don't understand anything she says when she tells me about like 14 to 18 year olds love Vine or whatever. Um, which is apparently no longer a thing. Um, but uh, consume like businesses go where consumers go. Consumers are on chat. That's the that's the basic pitch. So so businesses are going to try to go wherever those consumers are, and so they're going to go to chat. If you want to scale up your ability to do that from a pro professional perspective, you're going to end up using something like Recast.ai uh, to build out a chat bot because otherwise you're going to have to build it yourself. And businesses don't tend to be good at everything, so they so they use platforms to do that. Um, so on the other hand, I think the golden, I think the goal is not that people go, oh, this is an awesome chatbot. I think they should go, oh, it was really cool that conversation I had with Macy's today. I was like, oh, your products suck and I can't find a small for what I'm looking for. And they were like, oh, we have it right here, dude. And then you click a button and now you did everything. It should, it, you know, the, the ultimate goal, yeah, is to, is to create an experience where you're not like, oh, great chatbot. So, yeah. Anything else? Anyone? Yep. Oh, you gotta take the gotta take the magic box, shove it down. Do you have uh, startups in mind that were able to create um, a chatbot with uh, limited financial resources? Because it seems a uh, quite complex technology to handle, and there's a certain threshold. If you don't have a good enough chatbot, then the, the whole service is is pointless. Mm -hmm. So, is it possible for startups to uh, go into that market? with limited financial resources? I would say we're getting closer to it. I'd say the same thing could be said about like building a content company like maybe four years ago where if you didn't have the resources to build your own like content management infrastructure, distribution infrastructure and actually build out that content. But I think um, depending on what you want to do with a chat, like I don't think going into the idea of saying like I want to build a chatbot company is, is where you want to go. I think the question is more if you say like today I want to build a content company Chatbot is going to be chat is going to be one means of distribution of that content. Like if you're building a language learning app today, there's no reason not to to be thinking from day one. Like how do I make sure that that's distributable? Beyond that, uh, we're starting to get the building blocks together where you can say, okay, I already have my existing digital business. I already have I don't know comics, and now I want to put them on chat. So there's we're getting closer to a way of doing that, but. I'd say it's doable if you really want to. I wouldn't necessarily advise having a chatbot first strategy for your company. I don't think we're quite there yet. Any other questions? Awesome. Thank you guys very much for listening to me. That was really fun.